a big welcome to any new followers and hello of course to everyone who's been enjoying our videos for a while. For those that are new or don't know, we're currently hunkered down in the south of England living on a friend's boat while we give Narrowboat Perseverance a very overdue makeover. We're releasing videos as often as we can and have lots of footage waiting to be edited. We're alternating between making cruising videos from the end of our trip last year and narrowboat renovation videos from this winter. In a recent video you saw us take out many of the walls in our bathroom and we actually removed so much that we exposed the foam insulation on the bare steel. What we didn't mention in that previous video is that when we took out the side wall under the gunnel we found that there was some water in the bilge under the floor. It's pretty annoying but not really surprising in a boat of this stage, especially in a bathroom. Andrew has rigged up a pump to a battery so that we can suck up most of the water from under the floorboards and send it out of the boat. When the pump has done most of the work, we set up this huge dehumidifier that Andrew's lent us so that we can dry out the bilge completely. We don't really film too much of the next task, but here are a few clips of us pulling up the old dirty carpet. Filthiest bit at the front. Bear in mind, we've been working on this for the last two weeks. So. Yeah. All right. But I'm also sentimental about this bit because this is the bit where George left most of his skin cells. <laughs> All right, come on, get rid of it. Luckily, when your carpet is glued down, that's about how well it's glued down. few days since we've properly filmed but things are progressing slowly uh, but also quite fast last night we took out the the carpet it's all down it's all down there ready to go to the tip um, we keep changing our minds and uh, coming up with new ideas of things to do so I'm pretty sure I'm not updating the videos of all of that um, so Friday night we moved on to that boat so we no longer live in this workspace, this is purely a workspace. And then Saturday, Michael and I uh, did a bit of, not shopping, but like looking around to see fixtures and fishings and that kind of thing. Um, then yesterday, George had an emergency run to the vet. Saturday night, Andrew rigged up a pump for us. Um, and we were working on the water that we found under the bathroom in the bilge. Um, Today we want to drill a hole right at the back of the boat because that's the lowest point um, and drill another hole just to see if there's any water down there. I mean the boat's 20 years old the likelihood is there's been a leak at some point and um, there's no inspection hole so the boat really should have one so we're going to do that. We've also discussed taking the stairs out at the back because that's the only place we can get a washing machine but then we'd need, need a bigger inverter than the one we've ordered so things are changing all the time. Um, but yeah, quite daunting, quite scary. There's a lot of work to do. Um, and while we're doing all the things in the bathroom, we're talking about the kitchen, we're talking about this woodwork, we're talking about the flooring because that's gone. Um, so it's a little bit overwhelming if I'm honest. Um, things are moving slowly and uh, we wanna see some progression. But uh, yeah, I better go back and see what Michael's up to back there. Our boat has a, a good swim, which allows our boat to go backwards and in the water quite well and everything. But the swim starts fairly early compared to a lot of boats. So it is inside the cabin. We have a piece of steel that comes in down here and it's faced over with wood and that, you know, that wood kind of butts in. It would be nice to have a washing machine, 
we found a washing machine that's 40 centimeters wide that doesn't have to be lifted up, which I thought it would. I thought we didn't have enough space and we'd end up having to put it on top of the swim, which meant build a platform at swim height and have a washing machine that then comes up to like neck height, but it's a top load washing machine is the only one that's narrow enough. So then we'd have to be reaching in like this. <laughs> you know? So it, it seemed kind of um, problematic, but now that we've actually seen one of these things, it actually could fit in and go all the way down to the floor or possibly be on a small platform to allow for plumbing. Um, and, and a washing machine would be a game changer for us. Almost everything on the boat's great, but not being able to do laundry is, is a real problem. Now, the problem that we then have is our inverter is insufficient to drive that unit. Our inverter is also insufficient to drive the rice cooker slash slow cooker that I also want to have. So I was thinking about bumping up to an 800 watt inverter to cover that. Then we saw the washing machine. We're able to get it tested and find out exactly how many watts it actually draws. That puts it on borderline able to be run with an 800 watt. More likely it can be run with 1200 watt. A 1200 watt inverter though won't fit in the place where the 375 watt inverter is currently mounted. <laughs> so we'll be moving the inverter from under there to under the bed where the, other, the batteries are. So that'll be moving, that'll be putting a 1200 watt inverter in there. Um, possibly, because of power conservation issues, there are some really nice advantages to having the small inverter, so we might move it as well and set them up on an AB switch so that you can actually go from one inverter to the other, depending on if you're, you know, I'm in constant cruising mode, I don't want to be doing wash, put it into the lower one, and then we just have very, very low draw, inverter can run 24 seven. And when we need the higher wash, we switch over. Um, that would be nice, but it would entail putting up power switches and things and, you know, so we're not sure, but um, we are sure we want that washing machine, which would entail removing the stairs, which would mean tearing this thing out. So we're at demolition time again. <laughs> the funny thing is a few days ago, we were talking about the inspection hole and I was like, all right, we'll put it down here. And it wasn't me that said, you know, we could tear that thing out. <laughs> That's me. It was Joe. Joe was like, you know, we could just get rid of the stairs. And I'm like, Hmm. Huh. See, I was really weary of doing that because we've just done this whole thing with the bathroom and it's gotten terrifying, but now it's like, hmm, that's even more terrifying. And yet, it looks like a good idea, especially because we heard these washing machines are actually really good. The plumbing is already down there. The electrics are already here. The problem really becomes, you know, this piece of wood, which we don't really like anyway, because Again, like a lot of stuff on our boat, it looks like wood, it isn't wood. You know, the only pieces that are is here and this bit of trim. The rest of it's just oak-faced MDF and not particularly good quality oak-faced MDF. So, you know, I don't think it'd be a big deal. And if we had stairs that came in here and were more um, either with like offset footing or just sort of a narrower drop, the offset footing is probably a bit safer so you'd, you'd step down on one, step down on the other, step one on one on the other, and they'd be able to drop at a much higher angle than like 45 degrees. So we'd get a lot of footage back here. We could build in something for the washing machine to go into, which would still allow, hopefully it would be about this hall, so we'd still allow for coat storage and everything over here. The other problem we have is we need to put in an inspection hole. We're going to drill a four inch hole through, put that on top, but it's going to be a white plastic thing that sits a bit proud. So we can't really put it back down here because if we take out all of this, then we'd end up having to cover it over again. Um, and some of this would be where flooring is and everything. So I want to put it somewhere where there won't be flooring. Under the bed's a good option. It's near the back of the boat. It's towards the center line. So we should see water if we slosh the boat back and forth and everything. We know there was water in the bilge. We pumped out a bunch of water out of the bathroom. We don't really know if it's moved further back in the bathroom, but I kind of assume it has. Um, so I'm looking for some place near the low end of the boat. Center line useful because then we can sort of see if it's there. Um, can't really get into the back starboard side. So here's a good location. It's gonna be underneath the uh, bed. And I've already looked, the drawer sits atop these runners, so there's two inches of clearance, so I don't have to worry about the thing being proud or anything. So all I really need to do is try and find out that I'm not coming down on a steel support girder or anything down there. 
Um, and, and ideally I just go straight through and I've got a four inch hole and at the end of the four inch hole I have nothing but ballast to look at. First thing to do is get a hammer and start tapping on there and just see if there's anywhere that sounds not hollow or more resilient and could probably be steel or a beam or something. I'm sort of assuming that's what one sounds like, right? That's hollow. That's hollow. So I think that's all going to be fine. So I will drill a pilot hole with the hole saw. Um, and then I will check inside there and just, you know, hopefully water doesn't come squirting out. Um, <laughs> it's not really much of a risk. There shouldn't be anything pressurized down there. Once I've got the pilot hole, I'll go, yep, that looks fine. And then go through the rest of the way. Pilot drill. <laughs> So that's all through, and I don't have water, so I'm pretty sure we're fine. So, whole saw it is. Well, I did just see something down there. Alright. Find that thing. Keep searching for that thing. Lift it up a little bit so it's free, but it's yeah. still in the hole. And Get it to it. start spinning and, and really gently, gently start to let it eat its way in and then it'll be happy. It's the biggest thing I've ever worked with. Yeah. Ouch! Not that happy. Two hands on the drill. One and the Ouch! That is fun! That is fun, fun, fun! <laughs> Ouch! That's some enjoyable capital F. Ah. I'm gonna break a leg, aren't I? Please don't break a leg, Michael. Break it, Alright, let's double handed. through something I did there we go so I'm looking at brick and I'm not looking at water am I well Enjoy. it's it's dry all I'm looking at is brick <laughs> We also want to drill an inspection hole under the bath, but there's an extra sheet of ply attached to the floor where the bath used to sit, so we need to remove that first. I think that was it. Because yeah, it kind of went and then stopped. So that should now just lift out? Yep, that'll just lift right out. Okay, cool. Two more to do. As soon as you go through, you're going to blunt those tips on the bricks. Yeah. I think. There we go. Hmm. Well, that's annoying. It's not wet, but it's also 
It's also not much of an inspection hall. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Right. Sorry for the ghastly lighting. We're going to be removing the um, rail and stairs from the back here where we plan to put a washing machine. So this is sort of a point of no return moment. Uh, if I get this wrong, then I get this wrong, and we, we end up having to build something new anyway. So, yeah, the whole thing's coming out. Uh, right up to the floor there, I think. So wish me luck. The jaws of death. We've always hated these things. You stick your arm through there, you cut yourself open real good. If you're gonna make an access hatch, try and do it without using a hole saw and leaving a whole bunch of arm grabbing teeth behind. got here is a failure to descrudderate. Basically, I got a whole bunch of screws that somebody's used to attach the walls of the stairs. If I can get the walls of the stairs out, then I get access points to the under sides of the stairs. And that gets me this main support structure here. So it's just a multi-step process. Um, I have just gotten into an extremely awkward position in order to do this. So the time lapse is going to look awfully funny. But hopefully you can have some fun watching me do this. Hard one, partial success. First stair is gone. Uh, thankfully. First door was barely held in. Basically, there was just a couple screws. So now this piece should almost come out, except for I'm pretty sure there's a screw coming from this side, and that's why that's wedging. But this is almost free, and I can get these guys almost off. So, yep, just one piece at a time. I have found some highly uncooperative screws. So, uh, yeah, time for the multi-tool. Uh, curve around the pieces of wood that um, the screw's gone through, and then I'll be able to twist it out, hopefully. The, we've gotten below all the stairs, so I've, I've removed all the stairs. There's just the front board of one stair left. All I've got is the support structure. And uh, I think that the fella who was doing this was kind of of my stature and uh, didn't really pay much attention to what he was doing at the lower levels because I've got a whole bunch of screws that have clearly been driven in way too far. Um, they're like more than halfway through the two by twos in some cases and um yeah so the shaft where the screw has penetrated has swollen over time so i've got this like expanded pine above the screw can't actually get at the screw um so i'm gonna have to drill them all out that's what i've been doing is, is finding them drilling them out and trying to get to the point where i've at least removed some of the wood and i can get the screw head down there um but yeah, these are not the friendliest fellas. No luck. Um, no luck. These guys here, we drilled them out, and um, I can to a certain extent see the screws, but the screws are in really bad condition. And my bit just slips. So, uh, brute force time. Yeah. Okay, so having some trouble with this trim. Um, it's just pinned in place. There's four pins up here and two more up here. But it's very well fixed, probably some cement. Um, I'm not really trying to keep it. Like, I don't need to maintain it in good shape. But there was a part of me thinking that it might be useful for something 
uh, in terms of fixing something else. So I'm trying not to split it, but I have started to split it. So I think I'm going to try and drill out where the pins are and hammer them through. We'll see. Well, that idea didn't work. Broke my drill bit. All right, let's just try punching. Punching it is. Okay, trim's got to go. Uh, we've already started to split on the other side. So I'm going to cut here and try and peel that piece off. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't have any reason to use this, and I don't have any place in the boat I can think of where this U-bend would come in useful. Um, yeah, so, just gonna kill it. Last big piece of work for the day. This post which was at the end of our stairs, and this piece of plywood, well, it's not plywood, it's MDF. This piece goes all the way back to the wall. So I can't just like tear it out. It's gotta be cut off, and then we'll have to trim and finish it somehow um, to make that transition work. Or we gotta replace that whole wall. I don't wanna replace that whole wall. So the trim idea seems most sensible. Um, but I do want to get this thing out of here, so what I'm going to do now is make a cut uh, basically through the holes and the door all the way to the bottom so that I can make the majority of it get out of here now. It is loose at the moment, like if I push it from the bottom, it's not, there's nothing attaching the post in place, it's not structural in any fashion. So uh, it might take a little while to make the cut, but we'll get it done. Unfortunately, it's just gone 6.54 p.m. It's almost 7. And I'm going to have to cut this out tonight. I don't want to make too much noise for anybody nearby. And, uh, yeah, they're making a fair bit of noise left for a while. So I'm just going to shut it down. Go have some dinner. Maybe have a shower. And, uh, tomorrow I'll come back and do this cut. In fact, I might find a better tool for it. <laughs> 